Hey guys, John here from FlightMikeAlpha.com and today we're going to talk about five of the most commonly failed things on a private pilot check ride. Five things that people consistently make mistakes on and force them to have to go and do a retake. So these are five things you definitely want to make sure you're up to speed on before you actually go take your private pilot check ride. So the number one thing and probably the most simplest thing out there to avoid doing on the private pilot check ride is when you don't do clearing turns. That's one of the most commonly failed things on the private pilot check ride on the flight portion. Once you get out, you've already been through the oral and you go fly the airplane. Everything's going great. You've done everything perfect at this point. But if you don't do a clearing turn, you're not only demonstrating that you're not being safe in the airplane, it's also a required area on the PTS or now ACS. And the examiner really doesn't have much of a choice other than to fail you on that. So whenever you get out in the airplane, make sure you do clearing turns. And you can do them one of two ways. You can either do just a simple 180, clear the area, or you could do a left 90 and a right 90, or maybe a right 90 and then a left 90. So you could do either two 90 degree returns or a 180 degree return. Either way, clears the area. And remember, a clearing turn should be no more than 30 degrees of bank. Next thing that gets people on check rides, airspace. So either on the oral portion, the DPE may find that you're very deficient on this, may let you get through, or may give you a disapproval on the oral portion if you really don't know your airspace. The best way to go about this is simply just look at the sectional, Put your finger somewhere and be able to say the airspace all the way from the ground on up to 18,000 feet. What is it? From the surface all the way on up. Be able to point anywhere on the sectional and know what the symbology is, what it means, and what the airspace is surrounding certain things like a certain airport or what the airspace is surrounding a certain antenna or whatever it might be. So if you really understand the sectional chart and know your airspace, we've got some videos that I'll put the links in the description below that you can watch to help bring you up to speed on that stuff. But if you know your airspace, you should be pretty good. And then when you get in the airplane, make sure you can actually apply what you know of the map to actually flying the airplane. Don't just go take off at some airport and then fly into another airport's airspace unaware of it. Uh, for example, if you take off out of uh, Fort Myers Page Field here, then you could very easily wind up in the Class Charlie airspace of Fort Myers RSW, Fort Myers International. Uh, same thing if you're taking off out of Venice and you're flying north, you might wind up in the Charlie airspace of Sarasota. Um, if you're flying out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, you might wind up in the Delta airspace of Willow Run next door to you. So just be aware of the airspace you are um, flying around and really be able to apply that to actually flying the airplane when you're out there and really visually seeing it, even though obviously there's no airspace lines drawn for us in the sky. Now, one thing I want to quick add here that's really important is don't sweat too much on the actual checkride portion. During the oral, yes, you need to know the airspace and sectional charts pretty much for your area and almost anywhere in the country. The DPE can ask you about those things. But when you're in the airplane during your checkride, you're not going to be flying more than 25 miles from the airport. Simply due to time and what's relevant on the test, the DPE is very, very unlikely to be taking you anywhere more than 25 miles from the point of departure. So just be very familiar with the airspace in your local area. Don't sweat stuff that's 50, 60, 100 miles away. For the oral, you'll need to know it, but for the actual check ride and flying through it, it's very unlikely to happen during your check ride. Third, where people get into trouble is talking too much. Um, it may have happened to you earlier in life, but usually your mouth can get you into trouble. I know it's done that for me a lot of times and it still does quite a bit. Um, but anyways, Try not to say too much. Try not to say anything, really, unless you're asked to talk. So if the DP asks you a question, give a nice, short, sweet answer. You know, is the weather good today? Yes. If he wants to know how good it is, he'll ask you, well, what makes it good? Um, you don't have to say, well, the weather's this, 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 and this, and turns out that you may have misinterpreted a METAR or a TAF or something somewhere along the way. Just short, sweet answers. What kind of airplane is this? Well, it's a Piper. That's it. You don't have to elaborate on it's a single engine and its category is this and its class is that. Don't try to show off what you know. He'll find out exactly what you do and don't know to the level that he needs, to that's satisfactory to him. Remember, you're not going for an A plus on a check ride. That should be your goal. But whether you get the A plus or the D minus, you're still a private pilot at the end of the day. And not that we should ever aspire for the D minus, but there's no need to really, you know, shoot yourself in the foot by opening up your mouth and admitting or letting the DP know that you may be deficient in some area where he may otherwise gloss over. The fourth area where people often struggle is systems. 
You'll go out and you'll fly the airplane, you'll do your 40, 50, 60 hours of instruction, be ready for a check ride, but you may not know what all this stuff in the airplane actually does. So if you can't actually just look at a panel and tell me what every single instrument in here is and exactly what powers it, how it works, then you're probably not ready for a private pilot check ride. You need to know if I pull that out, what does that actually do? What does it affect in here? If you're told, hey, you need to stop squawking mode C or stop squawking altitude, you need to know how to work your transponder to do that. That may be something you've never heard uh, throughout your flight training. Um, anything to do with these radios, any of these switches up here, oftentimes you may not flip a lot of these excess switches that don't pertain to us, but if the DPE happens to reach over and twist that to COM2 one day, even though this airplane only has one COM radio, that could really put you in a world of hurt on your check ride if you don't catch that and you don't know exactly how this panel works. So take the time with your CFI to sit down in the cockpit, look at all the button switches, and point to every single one and make sure you know exactly what it does. Also, take the time to do a thorough walk around prior to your check ride with your CFI and be able to point out and identify all the parts of the airplanes, all the antennas on the airplane, and what all of them do and what they correspond to, as well as look under the cowling and know what all those parts and pieces do for you. We've got an awesome video that explains to you all the parts under the cowling, and it's really pretty much the same on any airplane you fly, and I'll include the link to that video in the description below as well. The fifth thing that will cause a failure is simply being disorganized. Showing up without your logbook all totaled up, or showing up without a sectional chart without certain documentation, showing up with a 2016 FAR aim when you should have a 2017 FAR aim because it's January 3rd, 2017. Um, showing up with any out-of-date documents, not all your required endorsements, um, and most commonly, you know, you may get through the oral with that sort of stuff because you're on the ground, you have time to dig for paperwork. When you get in the airplane and you leave your sectional chart in the back seat and you take off on your cross-country flight or your simulated cross-country flight on your private pilot check ride, and the DP asks you to deviate somewhere else and you go, huh, or he asks you, where are you? And you go, oh, let me look at my sectional. It's way back in the back seat. And now you have to somehow get that out of the back seat and still fly the airplane and stay on course and altitude and all of those things compared to if you just had a knee board and had it all strapped on before you ever started taxi, you'd be in a lot more prepared. We do occasionally see runway incursions or um, taxi issues with students on private pilot check rides, especially if you're taking your check ride at an airport that you haven't trained at. Before you taxi the airplane, before it ever moves, you should have a taxi diagram out on your leg or somewhere else in the cockpit, pinned up or suction cup to the side there, ready for that airport that you happen to be flying out of today. That way you are fully ready to accept any taxi instructions from ATC. You can map it out on the taxi diagram. And of course, you're on a check ride, but don't try to impress the guy. Just simply say, if you're not sure what to do, Please repeat those instructions, give me progressive taxi instructions, or anything else. Use as many tools you have, and if you seem to be relying on other people or other help too much, then the examiner may ask you to do it a different way. But certainly, use all those tools at your disposal up until the point that you can. Hopefully that gives you a good idea of five holes that people often get stuck in, and hopefully none of those happen to you. Make sure you check out the links in the description below to some really helpful videos that can help you prepare for your check ride, and check out all our other videos. They've got some awesome information in them to help you prepare for private pilot, instrument rating, and commercial pilot check rides. And even if you're studying up to be a CFI, really review all that information that you may have kind of forgotten since you first started it out. As always guys, thanks so much for watching. Any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and keep up with our latest videos as they come out. Check out our Patreon page because we really need all that support that you guys give us to help keep making these videos, keep everything free, and help pay for hangar rent and airplanes and all that expensive stuff. As always guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly at MikeAlpha.com. We'll see y'all next time.